Lesson 4, Reading the Light Plot. So far, we have discussed our basic conventional lighting inventory, the specific parts of our instruments, and covered the basic concepts of hanging a fixture. But these skills are only helpful to you if you know where to hang the lights. That is where the lighting plot comes in. But first things first, what is a light plot? A light plot is a complex drawing or series of drawings created by the lighting designer in order to communicate all the various information about a lighting design. This includes information regarding instrument placement, circuiting, color, focus, and more. At first glance, a lighting plot can be incredibly confusing. In this lesson, we'll discuss the basic principles and concepts of reading and interpreting a light plot. Light plots can be hand-drawn or computer-generated. For our purposes today, we will be using a computer-generated drawing of the Performing Arts Center at North Hall High School. A light plot is drawn in a plan or bird's eye view. This drawing shows the areas both in the auditorium or house and the stage. We can also see the stage right and stage left wing spaces, as well as the electric storage room. As this is a mechanical drawing, several key lines are needed in order for you to get detailed measurements from the plot. The first being the center line, which is represented by the dashed line running vertically along the drawing, and the other being the proscenium line, which runs horizontally from left to right along the proscenium arch. The proscenium refers to the arch framing the opening between the stage and the audience seating area, which you can see here, oftentimes referred to as the picture frame. Now, all light plots must depict the lighting positions in the performance space, both on stage and in the house. Lighting positions above the stage are called electrics and are numbered downstage to upstage. Here is a drawing showing the current locations of our electrics at North Hall High School. You will notice we have 1st electric, 1A electric, 2nd electric, 3rd electric, 3A electric, and 4th electric on stage. The 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th electrics all have dedicated raceways, while the A electrics are empty pipes, meaning circuits will have to be pulled from other areas of the theater to power any lighting instruments on that position. Our front of house lighting positions are our primary catwalk, the house right and house left torn pipes, and our balcony or booth lighting position. In some instances, you may see letters, which represent focus points on the stage area of the plot. Each of these focus points is the center of pool of light that overlaps with one another to create an even wash of light on the stage. The next step to understanding a light plot is recognizing the symbols for each instrument. Here we see a minimized version of our house plot. A house plot is a lighting plot that's not intended for a specific show, but rather a plot that's installed to provide general visibility in the space. Often our house plot is used to light the nine acting areas for our one-act competition show. Here we can see several different lighting symbols with additional information around them. The greatest tool for translating this information is the lighting key, which is often found near the title block. The lighting key is a chart that includes all the necessary information for interpreting the symbols on the lighting plot. It should include an instrument key with a symbol for each light in the inventory, as well as a legend that explains what all the different numbers and symbols mean associated with each lighting instrument on the plot. Here we can see labels that correlate with the information displayed near our sample instruments. For example, this instrument is focused to area A is part of a system of front light. Its color is R60, and since the gobo field is blank, we can safely assume there isn't a gobo in this fixture. With colored gel, we use primarily two different gel companies, Roscoe and Lee Filters. Each company has a swatch book of all of their offered gel colors. They assign a name and an arbitrary number to each color. For example, R346 called Tropical Magenta. This color was featured heavily in our 2019 production of The Wedding Singer. R for Roscoe and 346, its numerical designation. For Lee filters, the same logic applies. However, Lee gel assignments begin with the L prefix. For example, L201 full CT blue. 
L for Lee Filters, 201, its numerical designation. Some helpful information that we can also glean from the lighting legend is the instrument type. Be sure to reference back to the instrument key if you have questions. Next is the unit number. Each fixture is assigned a unit number, assigned along the pipe from stage left to stage right. This is particularly helpful when needing to reference specific data about a specific light and other related paperwork. Next is the dimmer or circuit that it's plugged into. And finally, the unit's channel. But what is the difference between a dimmer or circuit and a channel? A dimmer is a device used to control the amount of power available to a load. Most often, a dimmer is used to adjust the intensity of a lighting instrument. Whereas a channel is a numeric designation, which exists within a lighting control board. It is used primarily as an organizational designation. The best way to understand the distinction is that a dimmer or a sequence of dimmers can be assigned to channels within the lighting board. If you've ever turned a light on via the lighting console using a fader or a submaster, then you've controlled a channel that has specific dimmers assigned to it. It is worth mentioning that many lighting designers will include a notes portion on their lighting plots. Be sure to review this section heavily as these are written instructions directly from the designer. Some other symbols you might see. This symbol indicates the designer has placed a tail down or boom in or along that lighting position. A tail down pipe is a pipe that hangs down either vertically or horizontally from an existing electrical pipe. Here we see a vertical tail down or pipe end. Typically a boom is a vertical pipe or truss piece connected to a base plate that's attached to the stage floor or resting on the stage floor. Booms are often used in lighting design for dance, as seen here. This symbol indicates the use of a twofer. A twofer is a cabling device used in theatrical stage lighting that allows two lighting instruments, equipped with a stage pin connector, to be powered using one circuit. These adapters are very helpful on larger lighting plots when more instruments are used and fewer circuits are available. And last but not least, the title block, which is typically located in the bottom right-hand corner of the light plot. The title block communicates the basic details of the document, the show title or project, the venue and the producing company's name, the plate or page number, the director and other designer's names, the version number and date, and finally, scale. As a standard, instruments should be hung on 18-inch centers. While this may not apply to every theater or school, at North Hall we hang our moving lights or intelligent lighting fixtures first as a bit of a cheat. We ask our lighting designers to provide an entire plate of the plot dedicated to moving light measurements. When measuring, start from the center of the pipe and measure outward, both stage right and stage left, and hang the moving lights at their respective locations. Once this is done, the conventional instruments can be added in the empty spaces between the moving light fixtures. It is an important note that while there are guidance standards to generating a lighting plot, every designer's style will be different. Be sure to reference their key often. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.